As you may have seen, we've been traveling a lot in the last quarter of the year. I'll be wanting to give you guys a snack. Now, a good one, something you'll enjoy, like this random ice cream place in Indiana that was really delicious that you'll never try unless you live close to it, which you probably don't. But it's fine because Alex, Steve on, enjoyed it, and I taxed them by eating theirs because I didn't have my wallet with me. So in our travels, we ran into a build that we really, really liked. And not being over the holiday season yet, we wanted to spread a little extra New Year cheer. We are grateful for you, so sit down, grab a Shroop Waffle, bucket of fried chicken, Subway, Burger King, McDonald's, Dunks, or whatever you watch this stupid channel with. Now, steve and I got to pilot easily what was one of the finest conversions we've ever experienced, ever. Now, I know this channel is usually based around rebuilds that we do ourselves, but this one deserved all the attention, and I think you're going to like it. It's a matrimony of Mopar and Tesla, which is not something that you see every day, but this one deserves all the recognition in the world. Matter of fact, it won best in show at Holly High Voltage, mostly because Ice-T, Dolores, and the Cyber Quad didn't make it due to transport error, but I'm not bitter or anything. Besides, for some reason, I still feel like it's the holiday season, and that means something to some people. So take this bonus episode. Oh, you don't care about this. Oh, you want a tangible gift. Okay, fine. I'll do you one better. Bespoke post. Boom. It's a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands, and it's free to join. Steve on presented me with a box. So I wanted you to learn your basic survival skills. But why do I need this? To survive. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. Even live oysters. Based on a preference quiz, they'll fill out. Now our box lineup is constantly changing each month. Every box has around $70 in retail value, but only costs $45. That means I'll have $25 to buy myself a bucket of my favorite food. I'll let you guess what that is. Now, preview your box before it's shipped. Based on your preferences, you'll get a box assigned to you. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it, or skip the month for no charge. Pay only for what you want. To get 20% off your first box, Click on the link in the description and enter Rebuilds20 at checkout and learn more about the three boxes we got here on the Bespoke Post website. We are here with arguably one of the coolest vehicles I've seen yet. Sir, please introduce yourself. My name is Kevin Erickson and this is my 1972 Plymouth satellite I call Electrolyte. <laughs> this, this is very cool. So I saw some of the build process on this. Uh, on Instagram, yeah, and everyone was freaking out because they're like, "Oh my gosh, you're rooting a classic! This is such a cool car. Why are you putting yeah. electric stuff in it?" You've been called the Antichrist you, multiple, you, yeah. multiple you, times. I ripped the soul right out of this car. You Apparently, a lot yeah. of things, and I was there too, saying, "Wow, this guy sucks." Um, I'm not I'm just comments? kidding. No, no, that's not me. Jesus. So, why did you decide to do it? Uh, I just needed to learn something new. I built uh, turbo cars and muscle cars, and uh, I started with Holly carburetors and EFI and everything, nice. and this was the next thing. I just had to learn how to do it. So this is the battery pack. So this is a Tesla 100 kilowatt battery pack. Okay. So 16 of these modules. So you have 16 modules. Are they all up front, or is this between the front and rear? We got 10 up front. There's a box of six under the bottom. Yeah. There's four on top. There's six more in the trunk. Okay. And uh, I replicated uh, the cooling system. So these are all dual loop cooling because of the, yeah, the I see that. module. Very cool. They're all in parallel flow. So each box has a, a parallel manifold built into it. Mm -hmm. So they're all equally cool. Where did you get these batteries from, sir? Uh, I got them from Stealth EV in uh, Oceanside. He nice. Oh, you know Stealth EV. Uh, yeah, 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 Matt uh, Hopper. Yeah, you know his Mercury, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, very, very much so. He sourced all the stuff for me, you know, it was tested ahead of time, so yeah. I knew I was used to start with good parts. Right on, yeah. It's just kind of enclosed. Um, I've got a cover I can put in just so it's a regular trunk. I've got a cutoff switch yep. that breaks the back box from the front, kind of breaks the whole 400 volt circuit. The motor contactor's in here. The main uh, high and low voltage uh, bus bars are in there. And then uh, I've got more contactors for like air conditioning, heater, battery heater. They're all kind of in the back on the back firewall. This has your AC? Yeah. yeah Look at you. Volt. Yeah, I wanted a regular car. You Someone know? spent some money on this thing, yeah. uh, some time. Yeah. Uh, steering. Uh, uh, it's an electric power rack. Okay. So three to one, lock to lock. So kind of a quick ratio electric. What rack is it from? Uh, e Pass Performance. They, okay. All they'll tell me is it came from a European car. But they really? Won't, they won't disclose. Ah, uh, that's all they'll came. tell you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm not stealing their shine, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you have three sets of contactors there, which is good. This suspension setup is crazy, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. What, what made you decide to do that? That was out of necessity because I, I used an entire Model S subframe, brakes to brakes. The whole underside is, is Tesla. Right. I was so proud of myself that I put it up there 
and then I was like, there's no room for springs. Right. And so, uh, <laughs> all I had room for was these little push rods, and then yep. that became, it uh, started out as cardboard and screwdrivers and uh, ended up this. Dude, that is one hell of a, that, that's amazing looking. That looks, that looks awesome. Thanks. That looks really cool. And then, I mean, obviously it's very far away. I can't really see what's here, but a box yeah. that best look very familiar is this one right here. What box is that with the heat sink on it? That's a Orion BMS2. So that's okay. a battery management computer aftermarket. I see. Also an aftermarket charger. Uh, the charger has the- I see that right here. Yeah. Yep. That's liquid cooled. And it actually talks to the BMS, so everything's you know communicated for the charging. Right, well, it says charger and there's a charger. In case I forget. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah. That's a familiar sight. I know this is one thing about this car that's very interesting. This stuff here, what's all this black stuff? It looks like you got yeah, so uh, something happened there. I gotta talk to my tire supplier. I'm not sure. It yeah. Like coming apart. Yeah, that's. Oh, wow. uh, I that's would weird. talk. I would talk about that. That seems really odd. It doesn't yeah. seem normal at all. Part of the build, I wanted to keep its muscle car feel, and my favorite thing about the old cars is the interior. So I this tried is... to keep it as factory appearing as possible. Right, minus the, minus yeah. Minus the tablet. Well, you know. There's yeah. a lot of data that comes out of the BMS and I wanted to see it all. This is cool. So you have up and down, obviously for the windows. I mean, so, windows. so you, so where were those before? Uh, well, it was a crank window. And so I converted them to power. Oh, that's amazing. You know, he didn't want the party. crank arm strong. Yeah. He's like, you know what? So I deleted all that and then um, I just put them in the middle. Uh, I've got a bunch of different lights. And so then, what's so you have a so yellow for aliens and then white for a Sasquatch? Well, when I was making the switches, they had icons and I just had to pick a couple. They yeah. Cool. But those are like little uh, light bars in the headlights. Then I've got the fog lights, the bright yellow lights there, Bluetooth stereo. Engine start stop. Yeah. Strange place for it. Well, so there was a little map light there. Yeah. And this was a no cut build. I used existing holes for everything. Very clever. Yeah, I like so that. I, I just. And nobody will see it unless you're looking like this. Right, exactly. It is pretty cool. And then you are you will likely be the only person really driving this car, most likely. Yeah, right. And then so it doesn't really matter anyways. Yeah. And then what's this other stuff you have here? You so have, uh, a, this is a thermostat for the HVAC. Okay. So heat and AC, you just set the temperature you want. And then this is a PWM controller because it's a variable speed air conditioning pump. So yep. on model, moderately warm days, I just crank the RPM down and I don't use as many amps. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So there's no... So you don't have a, see we're so used to a world where we actually sit in the car and we either slide a button over or we toggle something to, to, to differentiate different fan speeds. You literally have like a potentiometer here that goes the, the speed and, for and how fast you want the fan to blow, is that right? That's just the speed of the compressor and I still have the old school like low and high fan. Oh, you do? Yeah. But, oh, that's cool. But it cycles the heat and AC based on what temperature you set. So I do have like a regular, hey, I want to be <laughs> 70 degrees, it yeah. keeps it 70 degrees. Oh, that's awesome, man. And then I see you have two, what are these, like two Android tablets yeah, here? Yeah, they are, yeah. And, All right. Uh, I see you have no, you have no picture selected here. Oh, no, never mind. Oh, there it yes. is. Oh, there's a picture right there. Yeah, you know, they're, they're inexpensive. Maybe it's not the highest quality dash, but the data, I can I can display all 96 battery cells on one page. Right. And so uh, I just really like uh, the use of them. And that's the Orion reporting back to, to this. And what are you using for, I guess you could say like a VCU to communicate with the Tesla rear drive unit? It's a, uh, t it's a T2C from EV Controls, Canadian company. Um, and it, it just talks with CAN bus. My pedal is wired directly to the unit and it just, I don't know what their magic is, but it works great. But it works great. That's yeah. this is this is a crazy build, man. Why the need for two screens? Like, what does one screen tell you versus the other one? So the left side, which it, it's funny, if you look at this car, the dash is actually skewed to one side, mm -hmm. so that you have a better line of sight to the left side. So that's all my amps, mile per hour, high and low temps, all the data for the car. The other side is just like music and movie map and rear view cam and all the other car stuff. These are uh, like real stats to, <laughs> to adjust the lighting and the switches. Okay. And then this is actually the uh, tension, the how much assist you get in the steering. Oh really? So if you want all the assist for pinky steering in a parking lot right. versus like uh, you're on a road course or high speed oh, highway, a more feedback. you stiffen it up. Yeah, yeah, right. And then line lock. Yeah. That is amazing. You know what? That could be part of that rubber problem. That happens the all the yeah. time to me. At yeah. a stoplight, I'm like, ah, oh, damn it again. Yeah, right. So, so the uh, the line lock, so you have obviously uh, an, an ABS system in here, right? No ABS. No ABS? No, this is old school. No traction control, no safety nuts of any kind. So, so line lock, so how do you lock the front wheels then? So I uh, 
give it good brake pressure, yep. hold the line lock, it locks the front brakes on and releases the rear brakes. <laughs> I and see. Now I can just freewheel the. Okay, because yeah. on modern cars, they use the ABS system. To exactly. Do that. They, yeah. they apply more pressure to the front. So, how do you. How does it know? Like, how did you? How did that the feature get developed? How does it know to actually lock the front brakes? Uh, the so it's pressure? just manual. When I hold that switch, they're locked. I see what you're saying. But you got to start with brake pressure, and then you lock that pressure into place. I see. I gotcha. release the brakes. That only releases the rear. Yeah, okay. we also noticed that your uh, your rear brakes and your front brakes are from two different manufacturers. But uh, they're both red. So yeah. What was the real reason behind that? I, I, I want to well, know. So I used it since I did use the entire rear end of this, the Tesla. Yeah, I just kept it all factory. So. Everyone seems to do that. But for some reason, they, they feel compelled that their stopping power in the front needs to be it something. It needs to be something. Maybe better. Willwood six yeah. piston, fourteen yeah. inch. They yeah. want the car to stop. Yeah, yeah right. Just saying. Yeah. Especially something like this. I mean, this thing is a boat. Yeah, it's it a mass. Yeah. Wait, you have heated seats too? Yeah, of course. You weren't playing around with this. No. Look at the heated seats thing. Wow. Well, I've, I've seen a lot of builds here so far, and this is this is probably one of the more comprehensive ones. A lot of them don't have heat, all of them have AC, and then a lot of them chalk it up to, hey, it's it's California. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I live in Colorado, so I need heat he and AC. It. That yeah. makes, that we have makes, all four that seasons. That makes it great, yeah. So did you, Colorado, did you have this car trailered here? Did you drive it Yeah, here? we trailered it here. Okay. Yeah. That's Supercharging a, could have been a... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it would have worked, but it would have been like, yeah. like the, uh, the Oregon Trail. like two weeks of, right yeah. yeah no 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 you don't want dysentery yeah yeah right <laughs> Yeah. So what, what's the uh, final gross weight of the vehicle? 43.58. So it's actually 600 pounds lighter than a Model Absolutely. S. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. But um, it's 55% rear now with those yep. batteries in the trunk. So the, the characteristics of the car is worlds beyond any muscle car I've ever driven. Oh, really. absolutely. I would imagine so. Yeah, your yeah. weight distribution is just and totally then, different. What do you, yeah. So you have a full packet here. Because this car is a little bit different, what do you have for weight? What do you have for range, I should say? If you have it where it's it's in fact lighter, but I mean obviously aerodynamics between a Model S versus this. Yeah, and fatter tires all four corners. Yeah, so. that yeah. too. There's a I, lot here. I plan on two to two fifty because I only charge to eighty percent. I think I can squeeze three hundred on a full charge and easy driving. Really? Yeah. It's one of those. You only charge to eighty. Wow. Yeah. A very, yeah, very good man. And, and then, I, dra I drag raced it today at eighty and it came out with a 12.4, so. What was your trap speed? <laughs> trap speed 106. Nice, man. Yeah, not too bad. That's out, super cool. not bad at all, man. Yeah, and it was uh, four runs, exact same trap speed every time. The consistency, consistency was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Battery, you know, the battery sagged a little bit. It was creeping up a couple degrees every run. Sure. If I could keep the battery a little stiffer, maybe I, maybe I will go 100% charge just for racing, but uh, still happy with it. That's okay. Hey, maybe we'll check this thing out tomorrow and see if it goes to the track. Yeah, yeah take you, you for a ride. You want to go on a run? Absolutely. I, I, I mean, yeah. That's what I was saying. That's why we're here. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're a handsome guy, but we're not here for you. Uh, we're here to honk your horn. Here to be. No, uh, no horn. Let's uh, get out of here. That's, that's, that's enough. I've seen enough now. <laughs> All right. Oh, there he is. All right, we are here with the electrolyte. We're gonna go do some dancing here. Yeah, another time trial. We're gonna hit the line lock here. <laughs> it's sticky. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's fantastic. Suspension is uh, phenomenal. Oh, thanks. How do you not have a blast driving? It's so much fun. <laughs> you just look for excuses. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go get milk. Yeah, right? Yeah, I gotta go get bread. Didn't, didn't you already go to the grocery store today? I forgot last time. I gotta yeah, yeah, no, no, I gotta get more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? Heated seats on too? Yeah, man. Oh, right. man, I love it. Yeah, there we go. I was gonna say, the, the pop bacon is on. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Perfecto. Hey, okay, guys. 
decent weight. Yeah? Yeah. Did I get it? How we do? Oh, 68. Getting better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was a 1246 at 107. Nice. A 2.0 60 foot. Oh, the old left the pump. <laughs> F the F the pump. Oh, here we go. You might want to pull your seat up a little bit. Yeah, sure. Oh my god. What was the original size wheel for this? I feel like it was more around here. It was a little bigger wheel, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like it, you uh, switched it around here. Right, yep. Yeah, it was it didn't fit what I was going for. Well, I mean, you also wanted something that'd be nimble. And yeah, nimble. right. Yeah. All right, so I got to ask, how long did it take? Uh, it was a year and a half. So I, That's it? The, yeah. Um, you know, it was kind of a grind. I tried to put one solid week a month in it. But, uh, yeah, I pushed the car in the garage and I drove it out a year and a half later. That's amazing. How did it feel to drive it out? Uh, it was... It was a day that I wasn't expecting. I, I was working and all of a sudden one day I was like, I if think I, connect I can this. turn it on. Right. <laughs> and once it, the wheel spun, I'm like, oh, I got to put it outside and take some pictures. And then here comes my drunk neighbor. Let's go. And so we go around the block. The hood is still on the roof on a blanket. It was, uh, it was fun. It was amazing. I went seven miles an hour and it was the most fun drive ever. I mean, yeah, you don't want to kill it right away. Get some, let's get it. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> did it break traction? I think it did. Yeah. It absolutely did. She just wants to at all points in time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's no, that so was great, man. in a car like this. That was great. It's it's so foreign, it's ridiculous. <laughs> that was yeah. amazing, actually. Yeah, right? Yeah, that was really cool. I have heated seats right now, Richard. My butt is, I got butt bacon on. <laughs> Like, like all, all modern appointments added to this vehicle. It, yeah, it's just so smooth. It's it's, it's ridiculous. It, it makes me just keep finding excuses to go places. As it would. <laughs> this is my first ride in the car. And it's, really? It, the pressures are different when you're not ready for it. <laughs> you know, it's fun. You're, you're getting the, the, the traditional uh, Tesla pullback right. in the seat. Yeah, because yeah, it, it is different when you're the driver and yeah. you're in control of the accelerator. Right. It's such a boat. It's so yeah. weird. It's so weird. It's, it's, it's strange mostly because it's like I'm used to this sensation daily driving an EV. Sure. And then getting in something so large and being like, here's the same effect. Like, come on, dude. This will never get old. No, no way. And it's been complete for how long? Uh, I finished it midsummer, so I put a couple thousand miles on it. It's my driver. This goes to school pickup, <laughs> this goes to Home Depot, this goes everywhere. That's it's so absurd. <laughs> This is, this is one of the most well-built ones. I appreciate it. And, and coming from such a car that is as, as old as it is, I, I suppose it just throws you for a loop every yeah, time. I think, so it's 50 years old next year. Right. I, I think it was just ahead of its time. I think the styling is makes for a good EV. Yeah, that's for sure. Ton of room back there. Yeah, too. right. There, there is uh, ample space. I know that paint anywhere. That's rustoleum hammer finish, isn't it? Dude, my favorite paint. I knew it. <laughs> I use it all the time. Yep. Very cool, man. So park and break off. Park and break off. Break Ready to drive. Yeah. That's it. Just That's up it. on the gas. Yeah. I know that paint anywhere. <laughs> Nobody knows that paint. Well, I know that paint very well. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've had many of many of cars. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man, even the steering wheel is straight. Right? Dude, you, this thing is dialed very well in, my friend. Thanks. 3D printed uh, PR, uh, yeah. Uh, or neutral and reverse. You yep. have a 3D printer at home? I do. Of course you do. I don't like waiting for, uh, for parts. People that make stuff for you. Yeah, make yourself. Oh, this one got hold of the time. Oh, no. That's amazing. That's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what? It actually handles pretty well too. It does. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. It stays flat. It's very, it's very resto modish. Where it's like, 
the interior is modern and like all the other bits and pieces are upgraded, you can definitely tell it's not an old muscle car anymore. Yeah, right. This is awesome, dude. Be it, man. Well, it's, yeah, it's pretty, right. Damn, it's pretty compelling. It's hard to go back, you know. People come from it with a different state of mind, a different, you know, mindset of hey, you know, it's either this or that. But this yeah. is, you have both. It's cool. Yeah. So you're not having a bad time. You're not gonna say no. No. It's a terrible idea. Are you kidding me? Are you thinking you get rid of the other one? No. Yeah, there you go. That's I figured as much. Anyways, it's an absolute. Beautiful car, well designed and thought out, and it was easily one of the most comprehensive DIY builds I've ever seen, and we hope you guys enjoyed seeing it. Anyways, we will see you all next week with our regularly scheduled programming.